This video I'm going to cover the easy steps to improve dimensional accuracy on your Monoprice Mini Delta 3D printer. Here we are going to cover the following calibrations. M92 XYZ steps per unit correction, which absolutely everyone should do, even just for print quality. To the quick and dirty M665 shortcut, which may or may not be good enough for you. And three, Dennis's carbon paper M665 adjustment method for improving the average horizontal plane dimensional accuracy. As always, check the video description for a too long didn't watch and timestamps. Please note that the best these easy calibrations can do is to make the average better. If some towers are printing larger or smaller than others, then more advanced alignments and calibrations will be required. Based on what I've seen in the Facebook group, I'd say the steps covered in this video are adequate for 90% users' uh, 90 of users' expectations of this printer. In other words, if you're currently okay applying a single scale factor for the XY dimensions in your slicer, then you should be happy with the results from this calibration. Otherwise, check out the video description and I'll try to pro provide resources for the more advanced calibrations. So, starting out, let's go to this Thingiverse page, which is where a lot of this is coming from, and the link will be in the description. And we'll go straight down. You know, I, I've got a 20 millimeter hexagon uploaded on this page, as well as some other things, right down to correcting the motor steps per unit. And if you see here, there are basically two options depending on what micro stepping drivers are on your main board. You know, just copy the correct one for your firmware version. Firmware versions less than equal to 41. Get these values in their 50s. And then firmware versions 43 and 44. Get these over 100. You can check your check your firmware version. Here's the Monoprice Mini Delta Wiki. Turn the printer off. Turn it back on, and the firmware version is going to pop up on the screen right here. And that's basically it. But, you know, notice that it's micro-stepping drivers. It's not actually firmware versions because, as I say here, if you're on version 45, read below. Note that steps per millimeter are calculated based on motor step angle, stepper drivers, belt pitch, and driver pulley. Firmware version is merely an indicator of what stepper drivers are probably on your main board, but nothing is stopping previous owners or Monoprice from changing things. Because, yeah, don't put it past Monoprice to make some sort of change and then not set that as the factory default settings on their printer. And especially version 45, its defaults go to the 1 8 micro stepping drivers, but people who don't know what they're doing just flash 45 because it's a higher number, and then it can throw things out of whack. So I mentioned the equations, so give, just to give you an idea, here's some examples. I highlighted this 16 because this page is pretty much assuming you're always going to use a 1 16th micro stepping driver, but sometimes you get 1 8th, you just replace that with 8, whatever. So so, you know, obviously if you have one of these firmware versions, it's pretty easy to tell what you need, but I want to show you what happens if you choose, if you don't know or if you choose the wrong number. Start off by guessing the 1 8th micro stepping drivers because that won't totally ruin your printer. So, I'm already hooked up via USB, so I'm just going to send these values over. And now if I do G28, It's homing, but it's moving slower than it probably should. Now if I do a G29, let's watch it. That's moving pretty slowly. Oh, look at that. It's trying to do the auto-leveling sequence in the air. That's not right. So that's how you know if you, if you send... And notice also how the whole time this LED light's blue, if it's blue or blank, that means no bed leveling switches are being triggered. I probably should have mentioned that first. So, you know, before jumping to conclusions that you've set stuff wrong, make sure that all of your bed leveling switches activate and that this light changes no matter where you press down on the bed. There, because, see, by doing that, 
I make sure that yes my bed leveling switches are op operating properly and the reason my printer did that weird thing right now is because I sent the wrong M92 values. And so now I'm going to go back I'm going to copy the correct values. Oh, yeah, I guess I didn't copy them. So I was still showing the old values. Paste. So now I sent that. So now if I home, look at that. That, that looks like normal printer operation to me. So now if I just send a G29, Okay, it's auto leveling like it's supposed to, so that's how I know that I chose the correct M92 line if you can't trust your firmware version. It gives you your magic numbers for print quality, but it also pretty much fixes your Z dimensional accuracy. Cartesian Z. So now let's talk about this quick and dirty adjustment. This is basically you have your stock values here and then Dennis calibrated some specific to his machine and these machines come out every which way coming from the factory so there's no guarantee these values will be any better and they might actually be worse for you but the way you check is you just you basically just print a uh, calibration hexagon and measure the average so right here let me open up this image here I printed my hexagon and on this side this is with stock values in the corrected M92 I'm getting 19.6 millimeters where it, it's supposed to be tw a 20 millimeter measurement in that direction and then when I try Dennis's correct values I get an improvement it's 19.81 still not perfect but way better and for you this may be good enough you may be able to just print the thing out take some calipers and say you know what for my purposes this is good even if you're only planning on printing toys I, I think it's good to get things in the ballpark because if you start printing really small miniatures or stuff you're making life harder on yourself if you're already printing smaller than it's supposed to be printed okay so now let's talk about the carbon paper step so the carbon paper step advantages it's super fast and quick it works independently of over extrusion under extrusion and filament shrinkage and it does not require great bed leveling for the 100 millimeter test the carbon paper disadvantages you have to buy carbon paper it can be and it can be difficult to get good measurements and one thing I forgot to mention earlier about the quick and dirty stuff that is mentioned on here is first of all your M66 is set all to zero for this because these two things do interact with each other once you start calibrating the machine so you know, I, I would not combine one of these with non-zero M66. And the other thing is that, I'm sure I put it in here, yeah, the stock firmware has a bug where M665R does not save properly through a power cycle, i.e. the printer will still report the correct M665R value, but it is a lie. For that reason, I'm going to suggest putting these values in your start G-code and replace any existing lines So let's talk about the carbon paper flow chart. And this is found in the calibration roadmap document. It is derived from Dennis's tutorial start. Like I said, this calibration is done with the end stop set to zero. And then you're going to start with one of these two values, either the stock values or the Dennis corrected values. And then you're going to take carbon paper and I already and put, place it face down on top of blank white paper and I've already cut it cut out some squares well first I need to actually home the printer again because it's in the way so G28 
All right, and I've already cut out some squares of paper that are between about four and a half, five inches squares, that's fine. And Dennis actually recommends in his tutorial taping them down. I found that I didn't have to do that, so I'm not going to. And now I've got carbon paper and I'm gonna put the black part face down. And I'm basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw dots on the paper. And so, if we go back to the flow chart, do that, and then we're stock send G29 P5 Marlin for MPMD, print the included G code file. We're gonna measure the distances across all, across the dots in all directions and take the average. Is the average sufficiently close to 100 millimeters? You know, that's very much a subjective question. And if you're happy with the results, you just write down your final M665 values, and that's what you'll put in your start G-code. Or if you're going to move on to bed leveling calibration, that's what you'll use in the bed leveling heat map, which I've covered in another video. And if you're not happy, then you're going to adjust M665R up or down by a small increment. You know, for example, if you need to go larger, you might up it by 0.1 to slightly increase the distance. If you scroll down, though, Dennis also has a, a, a little equation where you do 100 minus the average of your measurements, multiply by 0.57, and add that to your old M665R value to get your new value. And so, I've actually, I've already done step one so let me pull up a picture just to I've already done the first iteration so you can see here I'm using a ruler not super great precision measurement but for my goals with this printer good enough and I didn't use G29 P5 I used his pattern and I'm measuring the distances across each tower and that's why I've got notes like I circled where the LCD is, put a little star where this tower is, and then there's another tower here. And with Dennis's corrected values, it's, it's okay. I have 99.5, 99.25, and 98.5. You know, I don't think I'm going to do the average because, like I said, the goals with this printer are not to print super accurate parts so I'm just going to take 100 minus 99.25 just to kind of eyeball it it's equal to that now I'm going to multiply it by 0.57 using Dennis's formula and then I'm going to add that to the 63.5 And I believe I did that formula correctly. That's what I'll use for my next number. So now if I go back into OctoPrint, I'll do M665L123 because that's Dennis's default value that I did not change. And my new R value is going to be 63.9275. And I'm going to go ahead and do my seg segments per second for good measure. S120. That's something you should do. Just trust me on it. All right. And now that I've done that, I've already got, let's see what I, uh, here we are. And I'll also put a link to this MPMD Carbon G code file in the video description. But this is, what we're going to print, so I'm going to click load and print. So I'm using Octo Print. And you know, you could technically do this with just the SD card if you wanted to create all these th files and stuff in, uh, in Notepad and edit the commands and just do it over and over again like that, but I, I don't recommend it. Uh, the nozzle's going to heat up a little bit because it makes drawing on the paper more easy a lot easier see look at that isn't that a lot quicker than printing a bunch of test prints
All right, that's good. Now I'm going to take this off and measure it off screen. I can, if you can see this. So here are my new measurements after doing that. I my highest number is 100.25, my lowest number is 99.5, and my thumb's in the way, but the other's a 99.75. And you know what? That is over 100 millimeters, so it's not that much. This is this is less than 1% of error in any direction. And so I'm going to say that's pretty good. Now, if you want to go and dial it in more carefully, of course, I've got the stuff in the link for the more advanced calibrations for adjusting individual things. But before you start going doing test prints and measuring them with calipers, because at this point, I feel like you'd probably need a higher precision measurement tool to get better answers. I would go ahead and calibrate your extruder and flow rate, which I plan on covering in another video. But if not, all that information is also on this tutorial page. And so now that I have those values, I mentioned earlier about doing stuff in the start G code. So machine settings, let me expand this up so I can see better. All right, so I actually have calibrated values in here, so I'm going to I'm going to remove those because I've done some tinkering around with the machine and those are no longer valid. Z0 and then now my new M665 result is L123.0R. Let's see what this was. My calculated value here. Then I'm going to put S120. And there you have it. And if you're going to move on and do the end stop calibration after this, make sure you put this new value in there so that it can use the magic ratio and the math and stuff to maintain your dimensional accuracy as you go and do your bed leveling.